Now I want you to meet a lady who will be familiar to you. This year is her 50th year in show business. She first made it big in a radio, on the radio in a series that I remember well called Take It From Here with Jimmy Edwards. She went on to television and she played major roles in comedy series that went down in history. She was Tony Hancock's nurse in The Blood Donor. In the 70s and 80s she starred with Terry Scott in Happy Ever After and Terry and June. And today she's still on top and one of the most successful comedies in television at the moment. Absolutely fabulous. Please welcome June Whitfield. Kiss. Mm. Well, I made it without falling over. You did, yes. Good. Nobody falls down those stairs. <laughs> you don't look yeah. a day. You don't look a day over forty. Quite right. And you're fi <laughs> and you're fifty years in show business. I know. It's uh, well, uh, April the nineteenth. I suddenly found out. I was looking something up the other day in what is laughingly known as a CV, and uh, I saw that my first job was in April nineteen forty-four. So. Here it is. I know. Who is to know that ten years later I would be born? Oh, <laughs> I believe you. I remember you very well, you know, actually, in, in Take It From Here. Do you? I used to sit on top of my mother's sewing machine and listen to that. <laughs> With Jimmy Edwards. What was, what was the thing you used to always say? Ron and Eth. That's right. I used to say, how wrong. Anybody remember Anybody that? Remember that? Oh, yeah. That's a nice one there. Look, he'll remember that. Oh, good. But then you went on to television. That's where you had your biggest success, really. What was uh, the first thing you did on television? Oh, my goodness. Uh, probably with Bob Monkhouse. No, the very first thing was the passing show, which was uh, musical interludes yeah. and things. And, uh, but the first um, <coughs> sketch show was mm. with Bob Monkhouse and uh, Dennis Goodwin. I mean, you must have been regarded. Were you a straight woman or were you a comedian? Uh, well, I like to think of myself as an actress who's always been connected with comedy. I don't think I'm a comedian. I always think of a comedian as someone like Victoria Wood, someone who can really, you know, just stand up in front of an audience. Very strange, sitting with my back to the audience. I do hope you'll forgive me. Oh, ignore but... them like dirt. I always do. <laughs> As they say anything, you can turn around and gold her at them. But they're what it's all about, Jerry. I know, I know. <laughs> no, but they're all right. There's only yeah. one or two of them look kind of friendly. No, but I mean, but you were in a lot of the more very, very famous. I mean, you were you were in the blood donor. I mean, if anybody I was to pick something that was actually representative of being almost the best thing ever done, it was the blood donor. Well, it's become a classic, hasn't it? It's yeah. extraordinary. Well, when I watch it now, I always tell myself, actually, that's not me. That's my daughter, sitting there. Because it was <laughs> about 1950. One wasn't it, or fifty, sixty, oh, something know. like that. It may be a pint of blood to you, but it's my life, that's isn't right. it? That's right. That's it. Tony Hancock. To he was a very, yeah. he was a very complex character. I mean, you were close to all these people. What was he like? Yes. Well, when I first uh, worked with Tony, it was long before the blood donor and before he worked with Sid James mm. in an associated rediffusion um, <laughs> show. Do you remember? <coughs> Sounds I like mean, an electrical company. Do you remember company, the yeah. word? Mm. You know, associated rediffusion, and uh, it was a sketch show. And Tony was great, and, you know, everything was fine. But he was just, you know, sadly his own worst enemy. And during the blood donor, he um, had had a car accident, and he thought he couldn't remember his lines, so he had autocue, which, of course, you certainly don't have. Of course, like that. Of, of course not. <laughs> of course but not, June. He would be, uh, I would be talking to him, and he would be... All his uh, talk to me was like that. He said, I beg your pardon. I, how dare you? And he's not looking at me. You know, but that's one of the theory. charms about it. And actually, when you look back at it, he, he seems to be looking away all the time, and it looks as if he's distracted. He which is. actually adds Finding to his character. Auto -cue. But it adds to his character because you think he's mad. Yeah. But we could talk about a whole lot of things, but that's let's talk right. about some of the major things that you've done. I mean, Terry and June. Yes, <laughs> well, that, that went on a long time, yeah. didn't it? Yeah. I first worked with Terry in 1969 when he was doing Scott on this, that and the other thing. Oh. And then in 74, we used to, we used to do a, a sort of domestic sketch in the Scott Oms, and the then director, Peter Whitmore, thought it would make a situation comedy, yeah. and that's how uh, Happy Ever After started. And then... And then Terry and June. But that, that became, you know, that became almost the template upon which all sitcoms were, were based, really. So you, really, in a sense, you have a lot to answer for. 
Yes, but uh, uh, so many critics and uh, people, and even nowadays, you know, people write and they say, oh, I hope we're not going back to the days of Terry and June and that kind of thing. Mm. But an awful lot of people liked it at the time, and it did last overall. We did about 13 years, so it must have done something right. Right, here's the thing. You're still on top. Absolutely fabulous. Yeah. And that has almost made you a cult figure, you know. I mean, you're right back in the money again, as regards a younger audience, they, who love that. Well, it's, um, it is amazing, isn't mm -hmm. it? And, and really young. I mean, children uh, like the show. They don't like it in America. No, I think, <laughs> I think the Bible Belt w would object to it. To Smoking, it. drinking and taking dope. That's right. But then they have the Ninja Turtles sort of swinging about in the sewers or something, which is perfectly all right. Turtles in the sewers, that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Every child knows a turtle in the sewer. Yes, that's but right. But I mean, when you think about that, you know, it's rather amazing that that could on at all, you know, really with all the smoking and drinking. And, you know, it certainly is. But and the, these politically correct But the times. characters are so extraordinary mm. and, and way out that I don't think... Um, I, I, I find it very difficult to take any kind of offence at it because they are sad, awful, <laughs> dreadful women, you mm. know. And uh, Jennifer has written herself uh, the worst character of the lot, really. And you do a lot of radio as well, you do, with, with Roy Hood. Oh, popular. yes, yes, the headlines, yes, that's uh, coming back soon. Shall I tell you about that? Oh, do. Well, 31st of March right. is very special because it starts the next series. And usually we record at lunchtime and it goes out in the evening on a Thursday. Right. But this time it's going to be live because it will be the longest running ever uh, audience scripted comedy show, the BBC okay. or something. So it's going to be quite a, an you, achievement. You play all kinds of little parts in that and you've been known to try the odd accent. Oh, yes. Can you do a Belfast accent? No. Go of on. Of course not. Of course you can. <laughs> I wouldn't dare. Go on. No, I couldn't. Is that it? No, I, no it wasn't. What? That was County Mayo. County Mayo? You said, no, I couldn't. That was not it at all. Is he in Paisley, Belfast? Is That's better, that isn't it? That's better. <laughs> Before you go, can you give us a little bit of Margaret Thatcher? Because you look a little bit like her, you know. Oh, do you think so? It's very kind of you, Jerry. Yes. She has been a little out of the news lately, hasn't she? Which is very sad, really, because, you know, you find someone who has this wonderful voice, and then... Nobody has any more. No. <laughs> June Whitfield, thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. Move over. <laughs> thank you, Joe. I enjoyed that. Yeah.